Moving Averages, and MACD. In this video, you will learn what are moving averages and how are they calculated, how to interpret their signals, and how to use the MACD and MACD histogram. The moving average is a trend-following indicator that helps smooth price action and filters out the noise. It does not predict future market action, but follows it. Moving averages are used to identify the direction of the trend and define potential support and resistance levels. It can be viewed as a curving trend line. To calculate a three-day moving average, we need to add the closing prices of the last three days and divide by three. In our example, we add the closing prices of the last three days, 20 plus 19 plus 18 divided by three gives us 19. On the next day again, we will use the closing prices of the last three days, 19 plus 18 plus 17 divided by three, giving us 18. The next day, the moving average goes to 17, and so on. Plotting these points on the chart, we can see how the average is following the price. To calculate a five-day moving average, we would average the closing prices of the last five days. So on the fifth day, our moving average would be at 18, sixth day at 17, and seventh day at 16.2. If we were to plot both on the chart, we can see that the one that is closer to the price and more sensitive to price movements is always the shorter moving average of the two. The critical element is the number of time periods used in calculating the average. The key is to find a moving average that will be consistently profitable and at the same time fits the market cycle you wish to follow. For example, short-term traders use 5 to 25 period averages. Medium-term traders use 26 to 49 period averages. And long-term traders use 50 to 200 period averages. Another thing to consider is which price to average. Since the closing price is considered to be the most important price by the majority of market participants, most moving average calculations are based on closing prices, but can also be constructed using the high of the period, the low, the open, or even the median price, which is high plus low over two. The typical price, which is high plus low plus close over three, or the weighted close price. Although it is very widely used, the simple moving average explained so far gives room to some criticisms. The first criticism is that only the look back period covered by the average is taken into account. For example, the last 10 days. Another criticism is that the simple moving average gives equal weight to each of the look-back periods. The only significant difference between the various types of moving averages is the weight assigned to the data. Simple moving averages apply equal weight to all prices. Exponential and weighted averages apply more weight to recent prices. Triangular averages apply more weight to prices in the middle of the time period. Variable moving averages change the weighting based on the volatility of the prices. Now let us see how moving averages are interpreted. The simplest and most popular method of interpreting a moving average is to compare the relationship between the moving average and the securities price. A bullish signal is given when prices rise above the moving average. On the other hand, a bearish signal is given when prices fall below the moving average. The second interpretation uses two moving averages to generate signals. This is called the double crossover method. This technique involves one relatively short moving average and one relatively long. The length of the moving average defines the time frame for the system. A system using a five-day MA and a 20-day MA would be deemed short-term whereas 50-day MA and 200-day MA is considered long-term. A bullish crossover occurs when the shorter moving average crosses above the longer one. The crossover of the 50 MA above the 200 MA is also known as a golden cross. 
A bearish crossover occurs when the shorter moving average crosses below the longer one. The crossover of the 50 MA below the 200 MA is also known as a death cross. Another way of interpreting moving averages is through the triple crossover technique, which uses three moving averages. The third moving average helps avoid false signals encountered in a double crossover technique. The most popular combination was mentioned by R.C. Allen and uses the 4 to 9 and 18 period moving average. Some traders might adjust it to 5, 10, and 20 combination. The 4 day will follow the trend most closely, followed by the 9 day and then the 18 day. For a buy signal, the 5 day average should be above the 10 day and the 10 day above the 20 day. However, if the 10 day has just given a buy signal by crossing above the 20 day average, but the 5 day is below the 10 day average, the signal is not valid. The entry would be activated only if the 5 day crosses above the 10 day average while the 10 day average is still above the 20 day average. For a sell signal, the 5 day average should be below the 10 day and the 10 day below the 20 day. If the 10 day has just given a sell signal by crossing below the 20 day average, but the 5 day is above the 10 day average, the signal is not valid. The entry would be activated only if the 5 day crosses below the 10 day average while the 10 day average is still below the 20 day average. The moving average ribbon is constructed by combining eight or more moving averages, capturing a variety of different time cycles. A popular combination is to use four short-term averages, the 4, 7, 11, and 16 period exponential moving averages, and four long-term averages, the 25, 30, 35, and 40 exponential moving averages. The short-term averages group represents short-term traders' view of the market, while the long-term averages group represents longer-term traders' view of the market. Moving averages serve as a very good trend indicator that work very well when the market is trending. In a range, however, refrain from using them due to many false signals known as whipsaws. Let us discuss now the moving average convergence divergence, also known as MACD. Developed by Gerald Appel in the late 70s, the MACD is considered one of our best mathematical tools. It is a hybrid indicator that can be used as a trend following or even momentum indicator, offering the best of both worlds. The MACD is made up of two plots that are calculated as follows. The MACD line, which is the difference between the 12 period EMA and the 26 period EMA, when the 12 period EMA is below the 26 period EMA, the difference between them is 100. The MACD will be at negative 100. When the 12 is crossing above the 26 EMA, the MACD will be crossing the zero line from negative to positive territory. And when the 12 is above the 26 and the difference in price is 100, the MACD will be at positive 100. Thus, when the 12th period is crossing below the 26th period, the MACD is crossing the zero line heading into negative territory. The second plot is that of the signal line, which is a nine period exponential moving average of the MACD line. The first interpretation is that of the center line crossover, which refers to the MACD line versus the zero line and used for trend direction. A bullish centerline crossover occurs when the MACD moves above the zero line to turn positive, while a bearish centerline crossover occurs when the MACD moves below the zero line to turn negative. Another interpretation is the signal line crossover, which refers to the MACD versus the signal line and used for potential price corrections. A bullish crossover occurs when the MACD turns up and crosses above the signal line, anticipating a potential break above the center line, while a bearish crossover occurs when the MACD turns down and crosses below the signal line. Using the MACD, Thomas Asprey developed the MACD histogram in 1986. It measures the distance between MACD and its signal line, 
Because MACD uses moving averages that lag price, MACD histogram can alert chartists to an imminent signal line crossover in MACD. The histogram signals trend changes well in advance of the normal MACD signal, but is less reliable. The MACD histogram is calculated as follows. MACD line, the signal line. The MACD histogram is at zero when MACD is crossing its signal line. When the MACD is crossing below its signal line is when the MACD histogram is moving below zero. And when MACD is crossing above its signal line, MACD histogram is going above zero. It is referred to as MACD histogram because instead of being presented as a line, it is shown as horizontal bars, known in statistics as histogram. The MACD histogram anticipates signal line crossovers in MACD. A downward slant in the histogram implies negative divergence between MACD and its signal line and is bearish. An upward slant in histogram implies positive divergence between MACD and its signal and is bullish. In our next video, we will talk about momentum oscillators. Thank you for watching.